Hey y'all, this is Dina. Welcome to my channel. Okay, so today I am back with craft fair idea number 25. And 25 is these kitchen hot pads. They're like pot holders. You use them to put hot plates on in your kitchen. Um, I've sold these for my last Ford craft fairs and they do sell well. Um, let me just kind of show you. This is a Christmas inspired one that I have already done. Just kind of roll through these really fast so you can see what I have already done. Lots of fun prints. That one's fun. I always try to find some with food or the seasonal type prints. This one right here, I just, because I like the colors, got some shrimp action going on. And as you see, I got a few others here. There's some with grapes, winery, Christmas inspired snowman, winter. There you go. Okay, so this is, this is what I call the kitchen hot pads. These were a Pinterest inspired project about eight years ago. So um, I don't even know who had made them. I've seen tons of people make these, but anyway, I saw it though the first time about eight years ago on Pinterest. So let me just show you quickly how to make these. So, so simple. Okay, so what you're going to need is you're going to need five. 10 by 10 squares to make to make one hot pad and I've already cut out cut out my five now I usually like to have the bottom match one of the ones on the top and I have already ironed these and I've already put batting on the back of these I used some fusible batting that way then you have a little padding in between um, this is just Pellon. I'm not really sure which what number it is, but it's fusible on one side, so I was able to iron it on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to my iron, and I'm going to iron all my four other pieces in half, like, like at a diagonal, so it looks like a handkerchief. So I am going to layer my, my triangles, okay? So leave your one back square, this is my back square that has the, the batting on the back. Leave it where the print is face up, okay? And then you're going to take each one of your triangles and you're going to layer your triangles to each corner. So I've got my first corner and then I'm going to take my next one and I'm going to put it, put the point to the other corner. So these are gonna be like going in a circle and each one is going to a different corner. Now I'm going to take my green and I'm gonna lay it on top and I'm gonna have it facing the other corner over here opposite from this corner. And then my last piece, I'm going to have it facing this corner. So as you see, each one of them is facing a corner. Okay, you can kind of see that. So let's do that one more time, just in case you need to see it one more time. Okay, I've already got my one piece, and I've got this point at one corner, pointing toward one corner. Line it up with the edge. Okay, then you're gonna take your next one and you're gonna line it up with the next corner like you're going in a circle, but in this case, a square. Okay, I kind of moved that one, so let me fix it. Okay, so now I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put the point to the next corner and then the next corner is going to be this corner over here. 
So you want to also to kind of rotate your fabrics. So I've layered that one to that corner. And then my last one, I'm going to layer it to this corner. So now you see here, this one is kind of, as you see, it's kind of over, like you can only see three of the patterns. So what you do is you lift up this corner, come below, and you're going to lift up the snowman fabric that you have under there. And you're going to lay the red twinkly, I don't know, that looks like twinkly stars to me. And then lay back uh, that back over. That's how you can see all the prints. So now you're going to take your pins and you're going to pin these, all the layers together, all the way around. Just kind of, just kind of put like one in the middle or whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. And then I'm going to put a pin here. These really are fast when you get to hang of how to make these. They're very fast. Okay. Okay. Take that one open and put one right here. I like to put one on each side and in each corner just so nothing moves on us. Okay, I'm gonna layer this one. Okay. This one right here. And then last one over here. Okay. So now you've got all your sides and your corners pinned. So now I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch all the way around. You don't even have to leave an opening because we can still turn this. So I'm going to stitch it all the way around, like quarter of an inch, all the way around, just to make sure I catch all the layers. And then um, I'll show you what we do next. So let's head on over to the machine. And let's see, I wanna make sure I got you guys where you guys can see. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna start like right here. It doesn't really matter where you start just gonna start right here make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end always very important you want to you want to make sure that you um, you you know you hold in your seam there so I'm just gonna I always just line mine up with the edge of my presser foot and I'm just gonna go all the way around Take out your pins as you go. Let me bring over here my little my little duck. I made this one time. Needed something for my pins. Make sure you go all the way to the edge. You can use your up-down feature on your machine if you have it. Very helpful. And I'm keep going all the way around. Toward the corners, you can go ahead and pull out your pins. Got two more sides to go, and then we will be looking good. We will be so close to done, you'll be surprised. These are great scrap busters if you have some scrap fabric because you don't have to match your squares. They can be all different colors. Gonna 
pivot around to our last row. Right, this side down. Okay, we are uh, back in there. Make sure you backstitch. You want to seal in your seam. And I'm gonna bring this up. And I have a thing that cuts my thread, but I hate it being so short up in there, so I don't ever use it. Okay, so there we go. Now you see what we've got? All four of our sides are sewed. Okay, we're done with the machine. Okay, so let me rub you around here. Get you over here so you can see what I'm gonna do. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do after we've sewed, we're gonna clip our corners. So as you see, we got the corners here. Don't clip the seam, clip on the outside of the seam and just clip each corner because then that takes away any bulk that is on your hot pad when you're done. Okay, so now all you need to do is you're gonna take this and you're gonna take it and you're gonna flip it inside out. Like this. It's looking like much of nothing right now. Trust me, y'all. Just trust me. Okay, this is a good time for you to check and make sure you get, that you grabbed all the layers and it looks like I did. So, when I flip it over, it looks like this. Okay, I'm gonna go give this a quick press and I will be right back. Okay, I have ironed the hot pad and this is what it looks like. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I still do need my sewing machine. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna stitch a seam all the way around to hold these in place. You can also stitch in an X all the way across to hold your layers in place. You don't have to do that, you can tack the middle, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So let me just show you what I'm gonna do. Bear with me y'all. Okay, I'm gonna put this under my machine and I'm gonna just line it up with my presser foot. And I'm just gonna throw myself a nice seam all the way around to hold my layers in place. If you use the edge of your fabric, the edge of your, your walking foot, this little foot thing, um, it keeps everything all lined up and you'll have a nice straight seam all the way around. It's got lots of layers you're going through, so don't worry. Your machine can handle it. If you use your up down feature, you can just pivot this at each corner. Stitch. Okay, got my back stitch in there. Perfect. Trim off my threads. Now, like I said, you can sew this X in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So make sure that you're sewing right along the edge. You can go slow if you want. Just go like right along the edge. Make sure your layers are all pressed under there nice and flat. I 
I used a white thread today just so you could see what the stitches look like. But normally I would just um, coordinate my thread. So I've got that on one side. I'm gonna take this over and I'm just gonna come over because I wanna grab this top layer over here because the green is underneath. So I'm gonna get that. That's sewed down. I am almost done. Got that batch stitch in there. Okay, now I got one more stitch to go, and then we are done, y'all. Okay, now I'm gonna get this one. As you see, I sewed these down. Let me grab this one, okay? Try to stay right along where the edge of that is to catch both layers, get this sewed down good. Okay, I'm just gonna kinda kinda pivot myself because I wanna get this layer here since it's on top. I wanna make sure I got that layer sewed down. stitch and we my friends have have made a kitchen hot pad you can call these pot holders you can call this things just to hold your hot things I call them kitchen hot pads and my friends what do y'all think isn't that so cute Got a little thread up here let's get these threads off okay well, there we go. There is the hot pad. So let me get you turned around here so you can see it on my surface. As you see, there's the X on the back. You can see that. There's the front. Now, if you want to, you can sew a little embellishment in the center. You don't have to, but you can sew an embellishment in the center if you like. Um, I think that when you're using hot things to, to protect your surface and using this for that, you want to make sure don't put like buttons or something because you don't want nothing to melt. So I'm probably just going to leave them um, just like this. I like it like this and I think that they're functional. So what do y'all think? These are fast, easy, and good scrap busters. So there you go. Now you have seen my kitchen hot pads. And um, so anyway, what do y'all think? Okay, so here's the other ones that I have made. Now I can add this one into my uh, my loot of, of hot pads. Um, but anyway, so okay, so pricing. So what I did is I sold these for six dollars a piece, and I felt like it was pretty fair because I do use a lot of scraps for this. And literally, it takes me about 10 minutes to sew one up. Once I've cut everything, it takes about 10 minutes. $6. If you think that's a good price, leave me a comment below and let me know. Um, if you think it should be higher or lower. But I've sold them for 6 And some for 7 It just depended on the cost of the fabric. But for the most part, I sold them for $6 a piece. And they sold just fine. So anyway, so I hope that you like this video and I hope that you like this idea. And we are on number 25, y'all, for Craft Fair Ideas and I hope you're enjoying it. Anyway, um, until my next video, here you go, Kitchen Hot Pad, y'all. Y'all have a great night. Bye. Thanks for watching.